All right, China, China, China. That's all we're hearing about. Everyone is a worry about China. And, of course, they were hammered again tonight, uh, today, rather, news last night. Uh, but who says that the China collapse has to be bad news for America? Peter Lorenzi says what's bad for China could actually be great for us. All right, Peter, help us out on this one, because that hasn't been a narrative so far. Well, global growth is clearly repivoting to North America. Uh, in that context, manufacturing is becoming less important, so I'm less concerned about, say, the ISM data today. But what is going to be very important going forward is the Chinese are going to have to move up the technological ladder, which means they're going to have to do business with us. This isn't going to be about cheap pens and cheap textiles and stealing cell phone designs. It's going to be about design and innovation, and those are really American strengths. The other thing is, what we have learned is the Chinese stock market, whether the Chinese economy is doing good, bad, or indifferent, is not an honest game. Therefore, the best place for equity investment is in American stocks, even if it means buying American stocks that service the Chinese market. That's got to bring capital our way, and I think that's a good thing. What about also, you know, uh, when they announced the news on a devaluation is when the you know what seemed to hit the fan around the world. And a, and a lot of people were saying that they did that deliberately to hurt America. I saw it as them sort of throwing in the towel on this effort to make the yuan, you know, uh, de, 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 de replace the dollar as a de facto currency and, and giving up sort of on their domestic ambitions and refocusing on exports. Sort of a sort of a victory lap for America and to a certain extent. No. Well, to some extent, the yuan is weakening if you let it float simply because capital is leaving China. That is a very significant development. Now, granted, they're not letting capital in, but heck, we can now invest the big institutions on the major Chinese exchanges, and they're not jumping in. Why? We know it's not an honest game. If we know that, think about what the Chinese know. They absolutely know it's not a ch an honest game after what's happened, so they're going to bring their money here, their ideas here. We've had a lot of students, you know, come to the University of Maryland, come to the University of California, study engineering, and then want to go back to China. Guess what? Those people are going to stay here and grow this economy. America is going to come out on top, and American equities are going to do well. I'm not talking about today, tomorrow, the next day. I'm talking about the next 6, 12, 18 months, 3, 5 years. It's not a zero-sum game, though, is it, though, uh, Peter? I mean, we can, we can come out on top uh, and maybe dispel this notion that the next 100 years will be the Asian century. Uh, uh, but by the same token, China can still do pretty well. I mean, let's face it, what they're, what they're trying to engineer here is it's virtually impossible. But the t overall trend seems to be okay. I think it does. The, chi the Asian century is over. It lasted 15 years. And the second American century is about to begin. The importance of that, the very significant importance of that, Barack Obama clearly understands. It's about who gets to make the rules. We are not going to lose our rulemaking capacity in this context. And if we get to make free market rules, American companies will do well. We were dangerously close to the Chinese dictating a system that was built around their state-owned enterprises. That's not going to happen now. That's great news for American capitalism. Systemic variables count. Wow, free markets and American capitalism. Who knew? Hey, thanks a lot, Peter. See you again real soon.